How well do you know them, Mr. Teacher? You remember their names and you give them their grades, but do you know them? It's hard, so many students seldom enough time. Hard to be a teacher, even harder to be a good one. Because it doesn't stop with the grades, does it? The responsibility is much bigger than that. What kind of adults will they turn out to be? What kind of citizens? Part of that is up to you. To the many problems you must deal with, add another. Narcotics. Memo to all teachers. In accordance with the educational code of our state, instruction shall be given upon the nature of narcotics and the effects upon the human system. This will be discussed at the next faculty meeting. The narcotic problem. Does it sound remote? Something from a world far from your classroom? Ah, don't be too sure. Just one of them could make it your problem too. Would you know how to meet it? Most of us know so little about the narcotic danger. Surely it's time to find out. The basic facts about drugs are readily available. Narcotic drugs and their characteristics. The opiates. Source, the opium poppy, grown in the Near East and Asia. Effect, depressants. They affect the nervous system and a portion of the brain, reducing tension, relieving pain, and can produce euphoria, a sense of well-being. From opium, morphine is derived. It has legitimate medical uses as an analgesic and for sedation. From morphine, heroin is derived. It is no longer used in medicine, and its manufacture or importation is forbidden by law. It is a white or sometimes brownish powder taken by intravenous or subcutaneous injection. It is the opiate currently preferred by most narcotic addicts. The opiates are addicting. Heroin especially is quickly and severely addicting. Marijuana. Source, a weed. Cannabis sativa, the Indian hemp plant. Grown in temperate climates, including some parts of the United States and much of Mexico. Effect, a depressant. However, it produces an unpredictable drunkenness. Use, of very little therapeutical value. Primarily a vice, and a major part of illicit drug traffic. Strongly psychologically habituating, it is usually found in cigarette form in the United States. It is known by different names and used in different ways in many parts of the world. Cocaine. Source, the coca plant, grown in South America and Java. Effect, a stimulant, excites the system. Use, very limited medical use as a local analgesic. It is a snow-like white powder used intravenously or sniffed and absorbed through the mucous membranes. A growing problem is the illegal use of dangerous drugs, barbiturates and amphetamine. The barbiturate is the so-called sleeping pill. Derived from barbituric acid, it is a hypnotic and acts as a depressant on the central nervous system. It has various medical uses. Barbiturate intoxication is similar to that produced by alcohol. The barbiturate called goofballs and the excitants, amphetamines, often known by the slang name bennies, 
are being used indiscriminately in alarming quantities. All right, we know a few facts, but what does it mean to us? There are still many questions. Who becomes a drug addict? What is he like? Where is he from? Who and why? In the first place, it can be anyone from anywhere. Drug addiction can be found in all walks of life every part of town or the country. No one can afford to be complacent about this problem. It happens everywhere, but it usually happens in the big cities, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, big crowded cities. Often it happens in a poor or marginal area, call it what you like, slums, underprivileged neighborhood, but it happens everywhere. It happened here. What kind of a boy is he? He's a boy with a problem, and part of it starts here at home. He doesn't know what's happening, but something is going wrong. Deeply embedded are growing fears and feelings of hostility. He has great difficulty in his relations with others, even his own family. He feels inadequate, unworthy. Whatever the case, he remains distant, alone. What these feelings may stem from will vary from individual to individual, but there is at least one common characteristic of the potential addict. He has a problem that seems to overwhelm him, and he can't take it. He is easily frustrated, emotionally immature. Whatever the problem stems from, his family, poverty, sexual tensions, feelings of inferiority, whatever it is, it seems to be too much for him. A frustrated, self-pitying child looking for someone or something to lean on. We are beginning to see an image of the potential addict, a tentative general image, easily frustrated, emotionally immature, highly dependent on someone or something, and he's headed for trouble. A great many young narcotic addicts have been found to have delinquent records before they use drugs. Narcotic use is usually part of a pattern of trouble, truancy, gang activity, vandalism, theft. This is the common starting point with drugs, the use of marijuana. He's probably tried alcohol, but this is a new kick. Marijuana intoxication is unpredictable. Like alcohol, it brings forth a variety of reactions depending on the personality of the user. It can act as a release of repression and restraint. Some users will be erratic some irritable, some dulled and sluggish. With juveniles, reactions can be, and often are, extreme. They call it tea, pot, grass, weed, reefers. They all mean the same, marijuana, a weed that flourishes in ignorance. After marijuana, he'll look for even a bigger kick, something new. The 
something new is heroin. It is usually a buddy, a pal, someone ironically called his friend, that carries the contagion, the first fix of heroin. His friend is a drug user himself, a junkie that pushes to support his own habit. By this time, he might have also used the barbiturate and amphetamine drugs, goofballs and bennies. They just serve as further steps leading here. The outfit, as it is called, usually consists of an eyedropper and hypodermic needle, a belt or a similar makeshift tourniquet, and a bent spoon in which to dissolve the narcotic. even make him sick. But as the drug gains control, he will find a perverse satisfaction even in the sickness. And he'll be back. He's turned on now. Now he thinks he has something to lean on. His world is different now. Tensions gone, violence subsided, so he thinks. The same world seems more endurable now. For the first time in a long while, he feels that he needs no one, nothing. Ah, but he is wrong. He has an even greater need now. He will use it again and again. And as he becomes more and more dependent on the drug, he will enter a new world. A world of pushers, peddlers, hypes. A new breed of people to be dependent upon. Up to five dollars for a cap of heroin two or three at a time, then more. Ten dollars a day, then fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, and more. And where do you get this money for narcotics? You steal. Dependency, your overwhelming need, demands that you steal and rob at every opportunity. State Senate Committee reports that one half of metropolitan crime and one fourth of all reported crime is committed by narcotic addicts stealing to support their habits. 
Common crimes are shoplifting, bad checks, and burglary. Every form of larceny. It is all for junk, the narcotics. To an addict, that is all that matters. Nothing, no one can rival the drug. To the addict, it is life itself. Pipes or junkies are not all the same. There are similarities, but many differences. Not just differences of race, age, background, but different reasons for using narcotics. Different ways of meeting life, of avoiding life. To most of them, the narcotics have been the big answer right from the beginning. A crutch for their egos. A wall to keep out reality. It's a way out of life, almost a slow suicide. This is primary addiction. To others, however narcotics may dominate them now, the drug is not an essential psychological crutch. Drug use is just a part of a pattern of fighting everybody and everything. This is symptomatic addiction. And still others may not suffer from such internal strife, but may be essentially normal, healthy individuals who become involved with narcotics because of the pressure of their group or companions. Common among adolescents, this is reactive addiction. The majority of drug addicts in recent years are men, but addiction has claimed thousands of women. For a great many of them, drug addiction leads to a degrading life of prostitution. And we now know that though normally the reproductive capacity is hindered by narcotic use, should the female addict have a child while addicted, child will be born addicted to the narcotic and require treatment to survive. Most all addicts have a future in common. It is simply a matter of time before they are caught Large metropolitan police forces employ narcotic details, specialists, often working undercover, who are trained to detect and apprehend those who traffic illegally in drugs. Although many addicts may remain undetected for years, most are usually arrested, and most will be arrested on other than narcotic law violations, but for crimes inspired by their desperate need for their drugs. The road that leads to drug addiction often ends here, in the world behind bars. Physical dependence can be determined by the occurrence of withdrawal symptoms. The abstinence syndrome. The withdrawal period is a time of agony for the addict. Restless, sleepless nights, continual pains and cramps, Nausea, diarrhea, hallucinations, too. When he comes out of prison, he has his freedom, but for what? Same streets, same old neighborhood. He seems to be back where it all started. He is free to make something of himself, they told him when he left prison. But what? Does he have an occupation, a skill? Unlikely. Education? Probably not much. Friends? Sure, mostly addicts. What happened to him started here, happened here. Same place, 
same people. Now that he's back, the tragic likelihood is that in a week, a month, maybe longer, it will happen again. Soon, he too will be pushing to support his habit. And soon, he will be arrested again. Quarantined so that he will not spread his addiction to others. So very few narcotic addicts have been treated successfully in the past that it must be said that he may be condemned to this for the rest of his life. Such a waste of human life. Certainly man with all his knowledge can find some answer, some way to salvage these young lives. But wouldn't it be more sensible to prevent addiction if we could? That's where you could play a big part, Mr. Teacher. Education for some could be immunization. There will be some problems, all right. Tough questions that demand factual answers. There are some aspects of the problem that will require great caution on your part when instructing adolescents. Remember, don't exaggerate. You don't have to. The facts are on your side. The facts are terrible enough. It's quite a responsibility. But it is part of your job, and wherever you may teach, your community counts on you, needs you. Will you be ready?